the holiday of Hanukkah is celebrated um, at the darkest time of the year because it's a holiday that has to do with light. And one appreciates the light uh, most when they're in the darkness. <clears throat> uh, in the temple, which existed for a thousand years, uh, the greatest service of all the different things they did in the temple was to light the golden menorah at uh, uh, seven uh, places for oil. Uh, and, and uh, it had seven places for oil, three on each side and one in the middle, and it was made out of gold, this menorah. One piece of gold that had to be beaten into this precise shape. And, uh, and it's interesting that when Rome came and sacked the temple uh, 2,000 years ago, the, 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 the thing uh, that is remembered most is, uh, exists until today, on the Ark of uh, Titus in Rome is pictured uh, Titus bringing back the golden candelabra on a uh, chariot for everyone to see. So uh, we know besides from what is described in the Torah how it had to be that actually uh, they took it into Rome and presumably that's where it still is. Nonetheless, Though the candle, the golden candelabra, the temple was destroyed and the golden candelabra was hidden, uh, uh, presumably to hide the light, but uh, and through the world into uh, uh, hundreds of years of darkness, that each person went out into the world and was to go out into the world and to make their own light. <clears throat> How did this light uh, uh, come into being? So, uh, again, we have to look at the temple. And in the temple, the way they made oil for the golden candelabra was to take a, uh, uh, an olive and to squeeze it until the first drop uh, uh, came out of the olive. And that first drop was dedicated to the uh, temple. And, uh, of course, the story of Hanukkah, that the Greeks who were uh, who had marched in and taken over Israel, uh, demanded of the Jewish people that they uh, weren't allowed to uh, study, and they, that they weren't allowed to conduct themselves as the Jewish people. And there was a big rebellion, and though the Jewish people were few, and the Greek army was very big, nonetheless, the Jewish people, we uh, 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 were victorious with God's help, and as the Greeks left, they went into the temple and they uh, they took off the seal of the oil, so it could no longer be used in its uh, the way the law uh, said it had to be. It had a seal on it, and now it was now it was no longer fit for the golden candelabra, and the miracle of Hanukkah was not the victory, but rather the finding, in this time of darkness, one uh, small bit of oil, like that one drop of oil. <clears throat> and, and there was a question, should we um, uh, take this one bit of oil and light all the candles, but then it'll, it'll only last for one day, and it's going to take eight days to make more oil. So instead, uh, we, we, we could do a little bit every day. And in eight days we'll have oil. And they decided to go for the whole thing. They put all the oil in. And it lasted for eight days. And just like uh, uh, in the darkness one finds uh, the light um, in a sense more readily, so similarly it is in each human being that each human being has that drop of oil. They only have to squeeze them. And oil is of a particular nature. The nature of oil is to lie upon water. And the meaning of this, it can be seen from the um, uh, word for oil in Hebrew, uh, which is shemen. And shemen, uh, if you, like the Kabbalists, they take the letters and they rearrange them and make from it neshama. 
and neshama means soul. So there's a connection between the uh, soul and the, uh, the oil. And one of the connections we see in the metaphor of the nature of oil is that oil always rises. You put it in water, it always rises to the top. It always covers water. Water always draws down. The water is uh, representative uh, of the physical world. Everything draws down the gravity of the physical world. And the oil is representative of the spiritual world, which always draws up. <clears throat> it is through the oil and the wick, which is like the body is the wick, and the soul is the oil, and through that is drawn the light of the Creator. <clears throat> and that time is, uh, uh, is celebrated uh, in the darkest time of the year, like in the darkest time of people's lives, when they really get squeezed by difficulty, and comes out of them that drop of oil. And that drop of oil uh, is the essence uh, of the human being. <clears throat> and there's another aspect of oil, that when oil uh, is poured into water, mixed with water, it makes little bubbles, and it never mixes with the water. No matter how small it is, it doesn't mix. The water on the opposite is always clinging together, is forming one pool of water. But the oil in the water is distinctly different. And this also shows on the... Uh, uh, the ability of uh, one to be an individual. Because water, because it all hangs together, it can never really change the pool of water. But what does change it is uh, those people who can go through the world uh, uh, with their essence. And the essence never mixes with the water, no matter what the opportunity is no matter how much gain they could get, no matter how much security they could get, but to be an individual is more important than the security. And every human being has that potential inside of them, has that oil, which will demand that their uniqueness should be allowed uh, in the world. And the person should bring forth that uniqueness. And in that, the, uh, uh, the oil becomes a, um, uh, uh, able to feed the wick, and the wick is able to be able to hold the fire. And, um, uh, and uh, uh, from that, and in this time of the year, is what ignites the person for what is coming in the spring.